Do you need to find a skeleton? How would you tell people that design? You personally, how would you tell them? Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I'm research on this. Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur back again for another look at Cindy Lincoln's recorded tours of the science building at Dinosaur Adventureland. Now, remember we talked about Adam living to be 900 and the possibility that lizards, if they lived to be 900, would be large. Okay, that's in the gigantism section. These videos are not uploaded in chronological order, so I'm sure she had just given that talk before everybody got to this exhibit. But here's the thing about lizards. While they aren't indeterminate growers, their growth slows with age. The older a lizard is, the slower it grows, and the largest lizards in the world, the Komodo dragon, lives about 30 years. On the other hand, the Tuatara, while a Sphenodon, the sister group to lizards, and not technically a lizard, can live for about a century, but it's much, much smaller. The Tuatara is tiny compared to the Komodo dragon. Another example would be Cuvier's dwarf caiman, which can live about 25 years and get up to about 4 feet long. By contrast, an American alligator, both in alligator a day, I would add, will in that same time get to about 10 feet long, more than twice as big. But on the other hand, even 45 years later, that same alligator will be unlikely to have grown even four more feet. So just being old won't turn a lizard or an alligator into a behemoth. Um, that was in day two. So lizards are indeterminate growers. You and I are not. When we get to be 18, we stop growing, okay? Uh, lizards, if they live to be 900, they grow that whole time, okay? They don't stop at 18 like we do. So here we could have, now this is a, this is a guess. This is actually, we had this guy, a Jackson's chameleon. He's got three horns. He died. He was really nice. I remember when Kent announced that he got that animal. It was not that long ago. I can't say for sure, as they only live about a decade, and I don't know how old it was when he got it, but it seems fast for it to have died, if it got proper care. I would submit that Kent perhaps cares about as much about taking care of his pets as he seems to care about taking care of his partners, which apparently is not at all. If you have a pet lizard that needs to be rehoused, please don't send it to Kent Hoven. Those are not easy pets to take care of without doing your homework. But let's say he lived to be 900, and he kept growing that entire time. For example, we have an anaconda skin upstairs, I'll show you too, that's just humongous. It's like 20 feet long. Starts out like a baby snake, just like all the other creatures, they start as a baby. So, if that Jackson's chameleon could grow really, really big, perhaps maybe he could be a triceratops? I don't know. First for the anaconda. In the wild, they typically live about a decade and yet are some of the largest snakes alive. On the other hand, the Sinaloan milk snake lives about half again as long, but only gets to about three and a half feet long, whereas anacondas get to 15 to 19 feet long. This is because, again, size in reptiles is not primarily driven by age. It's predominantly driven by genetics and nutrition. Age is a secondary factor. Second, let's go over why Jackson's chameleon cannot be a young triceratops. For one thing, we know what a young triceratops looks like because we have their remains. They are not Jackson's chameleons. But let's go over the anatomical differences between Triceratops and Jackson's Chameleon. We'll start at the front and work our way back. So first we have the fact that Triceratops has two whole bones at the front of its face that the Jackson's Chameleon doesn't have at all. These are the rostral bone, unique to Ceratopsians, and the predentary bone, unique to Ornithischian dinosaurs. This already rules out the Jackson's Chameleon as being a Triceratops, but there's much more. Now let's look at the teeth. In the Jackson's Chameleon, they're fairly well spaced and present along the dentary, maxilla, and premaxilla. On a triceratops, they are absent on the premaxilla and only appear on the posterior end of the maxilla and dentary. Further, the teeth of triceratops are set more medially than those of the Jackson chameleon, which are basically run along the outer edge of the jaw. Triceratops teeth also form tight batteries that occlude each other. This allows them to grind plants effectively, as opposed to the Jackson's chameleon's teeth, which are pointy and don't always occlude, which helps them crunch down on insects, their primary food. Further, the Jackson chameleon lacks an antorbital fenestra, which is quite prominent on the triceratops skull. There are more problems just on the skull, but let's move on. Triceratops has 10 neck bones, or vertebrae, with the front four being fused into each other. Jackson's chameleons have about five, none of which are fused. Next, let's see about the feet. First, the front. In Triceratops, we have five fingers on the front legs, digits one and two facing mostly forward, while digits three through five turn laterally so that digit five is facing off to the side. 
In the chameleon, we have five digits which are split into two opposing groups, one with three digits and the other with two. These close together so that they can grip branches and have sharp claws on all digits. In the triceratops, only digits one, two, and three have claws at all, and they're more like hooves than the curved claws of a chameleon. Chameleon hind feet are almost the same as their front feet, whereas triceratops only has four toes on the back feet. Digit one is a dew claw, and digits two, three, and four are roughly equally sized weight-bearing toes that all face forward. Let's talk about the hips. The chameleon has a pretty basic lizard hip with a front projecting ischium and no firm attachment in the bones of the sacral vertebrae and the iliac. There are also only two sacral vertebrae. On the other hand, the ischium of triceratops points to the back of the animal and it has ten sacral vertebrae, all of which are firmly attached to the ilium, forming a sin sacrum. Further, the hip socket of chameleons, like all non dinosaurs, is a closed cup of bone, whereas in triceratops it is a ring of bone. The femur for a triceratops has a fourth trochanter where the chameleon's does not, it being a lepidosaur and not an archosaur. Further, the ankle joints of the chameleon allow it to bend its foot in many directions and are not fused to the tibia or fibula. In triceratops, there is fusion of the tarsal bones to the tibia and they only allow motion in one axis, which provides more stability but far less flexibility. Lastly, let's look at the tail. The tail of the Jackson's chameleon has short, widely spaced, and non overlapping caudal ribs. This facilitates the use of the rail as a grasping organ, allowing it to hold onto branches securely. By contrast, the caudal ribs of Triceratops are close to each other, preventing the kind of motion that the chameleon uses, but providing extra attachment surfaces for various muscles that in dinosaurs, but not in lizards, stretch between the tail and the hind limbs. So you see, there really is no chance of a Triceratops being an old Jackson's chameleon. These animals are similar only in the most superficial ways. And, um... These are some pictures of some living lizards today. They look kind of like dinosaurs, especially him. That's a marine iguana. I have to respectfully disagree. No lizard looks very much like any dinosaur. They all have too many fingers, sprawling legs, the wrong kind of scales, short necks, etc. But further, this is what Gutsick Gibbon likes to call just eyeballing it, which is not how science is done. I will say, however, that having some Draco lizards, a Eublepharid, a Caconid, what looks like a chukwala, a monitor, and an iguana is a nice display of lizard diversity. Well done to whomever put that montage up. But really, the only thing I wish were there is a Gila monster or a Mexican beaded lizard. Flying uh. reptiles? Well, gliding, and using its ribs to do it, which is cool and really weird. This actually was texted to Dr. Hoven just last year, and you'll notice it has this pattern of circle of circles. Circle of circles. It looked just like a dinosaur to me, so I googled it and I found out that these creatures are still alive. This guy is much more convincing even than the Jackson's chameleon. If he went 900 years, he would definitely be a dinosaur. Okay, so near as I can tell, those were Asian water monitors, Varena salvator. I can't completely rule out V. niloticus, the Nile monitor, but those are less popular as pets and the coloration is closer to typical for V. salvator. Water monitors are popular among reptile keepers who want big, impressive animals. As for the Ichistones, I'll address that some other time if we go more in depth on those claims. But as for the fossil skin impression that was shown, that's a skin impression of Triceratops. And further, the large circles on Triceratops are a single structure. But as you can see on the picture of the close-up of the water monitor scales, these circles are a coloration pattern of about 20 or so individual scales. Further, we don't even know if the large scales on Triceratops were a different color than the others, so there may not even have been a visual similarity in life. As for a monitor growing into a dinosaur, what dinosaur would that be? Varanids or monitor lizards are carnivorous quadrupeds, so in addition to having about the same reasons we know it's not a dinosaur as we already went over at length with the Jackson's chameleon, what dinosaur would it grow into? There are no carnivorous quadrupeds among the dinosaurs. I can say that it's not unreasonable to think of dinosaurs as lizards for a layperson, like Miss Lincoln, but if you want to teach that that's the case, you have to look into the details of the anatomy of these animals. Most people can't do that, but all people who can, including other creationists, conclude that dinosaurs are certainly not lizards. Now I know that Cindy is not primarily getting these ideas herself. She got them from Kent, whom I am trying not to bring up as Cindy is his victim, and I hope she watches this, and I don't want to bring up anything that might be traumatizing. But I want everyone to remember that Kent Hoven, who calls himself Dr. Dino, couldn't even tell me what a dinosaur was when I asked him live in debate, link above. So Cindy, if you're watching this, please don't take his word for things about taxonomy or anatomy. Check with even other creationists, never mind mainstream scientists. 
The Ica stones as well show circle patterns when they do their dinosaur etchings. We're gonna talk about the Ica stones more later. All right, I'll save my Ica stone comments for later then. But most likely if someone's drawing a dinosaur with a circle on it, that's because they saw a dinosaur with a circle on it. Okay, here's a picture of a dinosaur with a very fancy pattern. Now this I can promise was not made because someone actually saw this pattern on a dinosaur. Instead, it was made up. How do you know how I know this for sure? It's because I made it up. Now I base it on the markings of real animals, including lizards, birds, and cats, but still. Further, anyone who is going to take the time to draw a dinosaur is going to have to draw something for the skin, regardless of whether they have a life model. As a result, showing a Triceratops skin impression, then generalizing that to other dinosaurs as a group, then going from that to Ica stones, then going from that to Ica stones have circles, is a lot of logical leaps. We know that most dinosaurs did not have these large scales with circles of smaller scales around them, because we have skin impressions from many dinosaurs. This is basically unique among them. Not all reptiles have that scaly pattern. They also have different patterns. And I found a really cool Ica stone. We had Dennis Swift here, um, who has been to Peru and has numerous Ica stones. He's an Ica stone genius. So he came here to speak for our boot camp. And so I was doing all this research on Ica stones and I discovered this one. You'll notice he has no circles and he's showing mammal behavior and live birth. Okay, Ica Peru is showing this. Okay, sauropods nursing. Okay, but we know sauropods laid eggs because we have preserved sauropod eggs with sauropod babies in them. And we know that even if we ignore all the myriad reasons why we know that sauropods weren't mammals, they couldn't have nursed like that because they were born far too small to reach up to their mother's abdomens. This isn't a cool thing we have learned about sauropods from the Ica stones. It's a reason we know they weren't drawn from life. Also, as for a sauropod eating someone, they generally couldn't fit a whole human in their mouth, and their teeth are spatulate and clearly made for stripping leaves, not tearing into a hapless homo sapiens. And then in Mexico, there is this artifact showing the actual wrinkles instead of the round scales, feet that look like elephants. Okay, so elephant feet, which means we know that this isn't something sculpted based on seeing a real sauropod. We have sauropod foot bones and tracks. We know that their front feet were more like horseshoes than elephant feet. They don't have a fleshy cushion in the back. So they look like what you're seeing on screen. And remember, this isn't just a speculative reconstruction. We have footprints in fossil trackways. We can be completely certain that this is not how sauropod feet look, despite the fact that it's almost impossible to find the feet depicted any other way in pop culture. So what this means is that whoever carved this almost certainly based the depiction not on having seen a live sauropod, but on having seen them in pop culture depictions, further meaning that this statue is almost certainly of recent origin. But he's got the long neck of a sauropod. So perhaps some of the sauropods were scaly, some of them mammals. All mammals have more in common than just lactation. They also have a different jaw joint than other land animals. They have a rib cage that stops before the hips. They only have seven neck bones. They have a zygomatic arch, etc. We know that sauropods can't be mammals because they lack every one of these features and then some. Okay, here's another nice match, okay? This is probably an ankylosaurus, kind of like dinosaur from Mexico. I honestly don't see how that looks like an ankylosaur. If Cindy would like, she can send more information about this, but as of now, it looks like a fat iguana shaped into a musical instrument. This one is a match, only it's on the cave painting walls in Australia. Mexico, Australia. Same creature, two witnesses, different continents. I can't see the cave painting, but if it looks like that flute thing, it doesn't look like an ankylosaur. At least not to me. And to be fair, I do have a pretty good grasp on how various dinosaurs look. This Edmontosaurus is also another uh, cave painting found in the Grand Canyon right here in the United States. Okay, this claim I am familiar with. This is a close-up with the outline. This is the actual cave painting. So it's really hard to make out on this video because of the lighting conditions. So here's a better picture of the painting and supposed reconstruction of an Edmontosaurus. The problem is that it looks nothing like an Edmontosaurus. This is what an Edmontosaurus would look like. Granted, the color is speculative, but that's the overall anatomy. 
In fact, this group of dinosaurs, the hadrosaurs, is quite well known. We even have a mummy of one, nicknamed Leonardo, that gave us a lot of information about the soft tissues of these animals. So whatever this is a painting of, it's something that you wouldn't draw based on seeing a real Edmontosaurus or relative. But at this point, we're going to get into dragons being dinosaurs, and I'm going to save that for next time. So I want to say thank you very much for watching. Please hit like if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell icon, and remember to turn on all notifications so you're always notified when there's new Dapper Dino content. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. I just want to take a second to thank my channel members and patrons, especially those pledging $20 and above. Bob Knob, Bent Hovind, Ian Chen, Chris Love, Sphincter of Doom, The Venerable Bead, and Res Instance. My channel members and patrons help make this channel possible, and without their support, this channel really wouldn't exist. If you would like to help support the channel as a member or patron, there are links in the description to both join the channel as well as join the Patreon. Patrons and members get mentioned in these credit scenes, as well as getting early access to my scripted videos, and if you pledge $10 or above, you can also get access to various 3D assets that I create for Blender, both for use in the channel, as well as just general giveaways to my supporters to help in any Blender projects they might have. If a monthly or annual pledge isn't for you, then there is also a merch store linked in the description. And if none of that's right for you, please just like and subscribe because every like and subscription really helps the video out. Thank you.